Hey guys, welcome back to Career Team Chats. Um, this is obviously episode four, I'm going to guess, I think. Yeah, four, not four. Counting with Stephen. Um, I hope well, like, I hope you're enjoying it. I really am. It's a bit of crack and to meet up with old friends, have a chat over Zoom. Obviously, an extended friendship after it's not just a call. Um, but yeah, look, it's been really enjoying. People are watching them and getting good feedback. And, and it's a bit of crack and I get to catch up with old friends. This week, I have my, one of my old friends. We were friends about 15 years. If you'd like to introduce yourself. My name's Cathy. Hello. <laughs> I am very awkward about this now. <laughs> <laughs> you shall be comfortable too and get more vino into you. Um, yeah, so look, me and Cathy have what we've known each other, let's say, about 15 years. We went to school together and then we drank a lot together. And also we used to yeah. pony club and a few other things. We'll get into that. Yeah. Um, the kind of outline of this, we're going to go into a little bit about Cathy's job as much as she's comfortable talking about. And um, we're also going to then obviously talk about some things about love. Drag race of today is going to be kind of a bit more fun one, less of the more like work oriented. Uh, but obviously, Kai is a different person, like walks a different life, so she'll have an idea of how the quarantine or quarantine is affecting her as well as this COVID fucking disaster. You know, yourself, mm. we're all getting <laughs> coming out, colleagues. Right, Kai, as I said, um, at the start of this, what we're going to do is a quick fire round. Um, if I can remember, but there it is, right? We have the quick fire questions. Very prepared here, so we are <laughs> not <laughs> right. So, number one would be your biggest fear. Okay, my biggest fear. Oh, just one. Um, <laughs> so I have <laughs> reoccurring nightmares for like three things that re I have reoccurring nightmares about large waves, even like I love the sea, but I have reoccurring nightmares that I'm going to be in the middle of a tsunami or something snakes substantial snakes huge big mm -hmm. things size of the same the same size as tsunami we'll say and <laughs> spiders they're my favorite but then like i'm not that scared of any of those things in real life but i have reoccurring nightmares about them it kills me oh but on a more oh. deep level what am i scared of on a more deep level i hate being made a fool of and then i sign up for shit like this and that's fucking you wonder why I have a fear of being made a fool of when I put myself in situations where I could be made a fool of. But anyway, yeah. Now this is this is a safe place, as I've said before to anyone who's on here. Look, if there's anything you want to remove, anything that we do, obviously I'd probably tell you to fuck off and say it's cool, you know. Oh no, definitely the big fear, the waves thing I get because I nearly drowned as a kid. Um, snakes. Did you? Love... Oh God, how did you nearly drown as a kid? Uh, Trabalgan, you know the way the wave pool, the way it come up and down. Yeah. Obviously, mum and dad let me go in the pool. William was in there, then William disappeared and. Stephen been a like six or seven year old little child, washed out, screaming, fucking toboggan down. Do you think my parents heard me? You know yourself, but you've been to toboggan in Cork, haven't you? you remember, like, oh my god, I was very, but like very young. I don't, I barely remember it, but oh my god. Oh yeah, and these two, I think they were Welsh. They were English women anyway. They were fairly funny. I ended up saving me because she saw me like drowning. So I have an absolute fear of war. If I can't touch my foot on the ground. Like wow. We jumped, we jumped off a boat and I'd be sat on our holiday last year. And I was like, you don't it. Um, jumped in. Got in the water with Grant with them and I went down. And the deeper I went down, I was like, <gasps> so coming back up, it was hilarious. Yeah, I nearly drank Killian by trying to save myself. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You Turned Killian into a fucking buoyancy aid. Like. <laughs> mm, quite literally. And all, like, the true, oh, but yeah. like, lifeguard thing, I was like, oh no, going downstairs. I've I see sickness now. Yeah, so I get to war. <laughs> I definitely have that look into it because like, I'm really into like that whole side of like having dreams looked into and like energies and that kind of thing. Um, that might mean something. Yeah. That's something to think about actually. Mm, Before, like, I must we'll have a lot of the bloody reoccurring and they're practically in sequence. So they'll have practically happen one, two, three and then repeat one, two, three. And is it every, like, every night or every No, so no. Probably like twice a month maybe and then like don't they say that you don't remember most of your dreams as well mm. so like it probably happens more often and i just don't remember it but like also, when you're stressed. have you been having really weird quarantine dreams i feel oh, like yeah. this is a normal i've been talking to my friends about this we're all having very bizarre dreams who was in my dream last night that like is not someone i think it was someone i work with or something but they were very they were like saving me from like a mine or something i don't know really weird like yeah anyway the quarantine dreams have been freaking me out well, I'm saying, and I do think I was. This is what I've kind of touched on a lot of people, like in regards to these chats, is about our mind in this situation. I think it's because we are obviously busy, you're working from home, it's a different thing for you, but you have a lot more time with your own thoughts and your brain can actually relax. 
So maybe it is a cerebral. Waste too much time on Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Waste too much time. So it's allowing your cerebral cortex to then have that time to make them dreams because obviously you were too tired, you were drunk, or whatever, or you were just stressed, you didn't have them. So it could be just our brain resetting. But also, yes, yeah. scarily vivid quarantine dreams, and it's like <gasps> waking up from like what happened. Like I had sleep paralysis two nights ago, three nights ago. Great. Oh, oh god. Full panic attack before I went to bed as Not well. Not something I've ever experienced, but like oh god. No, I had a panic attack before it. Then fell asleep and then had sleep paralysis. Necessary. I was wrecked the next day. And like, I, I was just gonna say I've had it a few times, like sorry for going across you there. Okay. Um I've had it a few times where like Killian has woke up and had to wake me up because he can see me like a profusely sweat you never want. Um that was sleep paralysis. Ugh. Oh and, like, I'm really into energy and spirits and that kind of thing. So like I was like steam and and I've also looked into it so <laughs> yes it's so I funny the way like our relationship is you know because obviously it's dropped off but like it's funny like I'd love to know about that side of you because like that's something that I'd be so intrigued about like in astrology and stuff is something that I love like um I'm a big fat fuck on astrology actually the only astrology book you'll ever need <laughs> that's a good title. and it's huge but yeah my dyslexic brain is like nope <laughs> Huh? My dyslexic brain is like, nope, that's a very large book. Yeah, no, it, there's an audiobook version. <laughs> I don't definitely like very this. Good. Is what I've said about these as well. I've got gotten contact with a lot more people because of this. Like moving yeah. away, I was just like, oh, I left everyone. I didn't want to leave everyone, but then when you leave and you move away, you're like, fuck everybody. Um, but yeah. you know, been able to do this, and it's kind of an excuse then to talk to old friends. And I think we will probably take back over we did before. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's that's something like we definitely will have to travel after this. Because we are literally yeah, a song question one. Very, very good. No. <laughs> uh, so before we do go out of the rabbit hole, uh, so number two of the quick quick fire uh, will be <laughs> your favorite food. Oh, carbonara. <sighs> Easy. Mm. Carbonara. KJ's carbonara. There's literally a reason that I'm well overweight. <laughs> and it's cream. <laughs> Just pasta. It <laughs> and even though, like, I mean, if there's any Italians watching, I know it's not made with cream and I make it a little bit healthier sometimes, but when you add the cream in, it's just too good. Yeah. Oh, the Irish way. Carbonara. Oh, like properly, you, yeah. So good. It's like when you make mashed potato and people are like, why you put milk in them? Like, or heavy cream? Like, and I have to pour them. Like, because you have to. Because that's, that's how mash is made. Like, review, review yeah. yourself from this question. We own potatoes. <laughs> it's called creamy mash. Yeah. Crazy. There's a reason. There's cream and milk in it, like. Oh, that's so much more. <laughs> and has to be terrible, but rather, what is not? Oh, I made a roast last nothing. weekend. It was stunning. Anyway, God, we're getting so straight oh. tracked. <laughs> oh, now I want to roast. Can you make a roast for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> right, so number three will be the worst place to get stuck. Oh. Stuck as in physically, well, of course, physically stuck. Like yeah, we don't want to go down some sort of rabbit hole a bit, like. When I get stuck in this part of my head, I do this. <laughs> um, definitely in the presence of somebody who's really dull. Like, do you know if you go to a friend's birthday party or like a dinner party or something for their birthday and you don't know all of their mates and you end up sitting beside somebody who they work with who's so dull. And here's me like effing and blinding because I have an awful, like I have such a potty mouth. Like, and they're just there like, yeah yeah and I'm like and I could be talking about anything yeah and the conver- you're just getting like this back and I'm like am I boring or are you boring <laughs> I don't know so then yeah it's it's fucking shit or like at a party being stuck with somebody or somebody who's fucking whacked on drugs and then they're just like talking in your ear and you have no idea who they are and you're not even close to their level and that's, talking that's the worst kind of stuck that's the worst kind of stuff. Unless they're on a love buzz and they're telling you how wonderful you are, then I'm eating that shit up. Oh, yeah. Like, tell me more. Tell me how fabulous I am. Tell me more. <laughs> Last night when I had makeup on, I was like, I am fabulous, Killian. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> he's like, I'm oh, yeah. gorgeous. I went to kiss him. He's like, no, not happening. I'm like, love me. <laughs> he's like, no, you have a full Killian, face on. It was men off. I'm attracted to, not women. <laughs> I that a woman. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm People like that can't deal with it. And yeah. I, was, I think that's like that's why me and you got on so as well. It's like that kind of situation would like wreck over heads because we will get in our own heads and like, um, is it me or is it the other person? But yet that situation has happened so many times at dinner parties or a night out where someone brings their friend's friend and I'm like, no, don't leave me with Karen. Because <laughs> yeah, Karen's Karen, oh, Car- They're always Karen. Or like 
yeah, we'll just stick with Karen because I'm going to end up sending somebody otherwise. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not about that. I think I said someone's name. <laughs> that was not oh, meant yeah, to. I'm a mean way to anyone. I know. Yeah, uh, it's about Karen. Though, though. Exactly. So the next one, number four, is are you a morning person or a night person? I love to say I was a morning person. I try really hard. Well, I don't try really hard. I just set loads of alarms. And then I try to be a morning person. But no, I'm a night owl. Like, I'm, I could stay up all night long. No problem. But I can't get out of bed. Impossible. I'm fucking woeful. But I love to be one of those people that gets up in the morning and goes out for a run. And because I get up in the morning, goes for a run, I can wear a sports bra while I run. And that would be just stream stuff. But I don't think it's ever going to be me. It's just, yeah. It's, actually, right. do you know what? <laughs> the top of like morning runs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah the actual thought of them is awful, but being one of the people who enjoyed them, if only. If only. Those people definitely have seriously productive lives. Oh, yeah. It's like, I have my shit together. I'm like, what's that like? <laughs> yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> So when people say that, like, oh, you moved away, like, you've got your life together, like, both me and you both live from our hometown, we're like, oh, your life's together, I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. 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 That, that, we're <laughs> going with that. Mm-hmm. Mom, when you said you tell her I'm really broke. We need pasta. Can you drop up the fifth cliff? Yeah, please. Or when I go home for the weekend, I don't go home often, and go home and be like, you're waiting for her to go to bed at night or something you're just like in under the sink press then taking the expensive dishwasher tablets being like fuck this I'm not paying for them but they wash the dishes better <laughs> that in the bag oh you're washing powder grab a bag of that yeah oh, the, the fancy the uh, what's it called the stuff the fabric softener do you know that stuff that people mm. buy for themselves when they're adults I still don't buy that because as oh, much as I'd like to have it I'm not spending money on it <laughs> so I just steal a bottle belonging to my mum and it's like that comfort intense one, the one that costs like six or seven worried. It's worth yeah. it. It's really sad that we're talking about that, but it's definitely worth word. Definitely, definitely word. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, we get it. Oh, yeah. We're such adults. Like, your towels, like, are so much softer. I was like, like, my wig is just in the background there. I'm just like, what is that? <laughs> um, oh, comfort softener. Like, no joke. Best thing ever. Makes your towels so, so much softer. Okay. I know. It does. I just my can't like seven euro. It just seems insane. Yeah, I know, that's a <laughs> that is a full pint. Yeah, I might be an adult, but I'm not a full adult yet. So I haven't got my full badge. <laughs> Me either. I'm like, I really like this. Like, I really like Hoover's and looking up like treasure drawers and like, I wonder what this would look like in our house that I haven't bought yet or don't have or probably won't have for the next like, two or three years. But I'm like, I want all of this. You know, be like, I want why do you think? Like, why are you excited about a vacuum? I'm like, because it works good. <laughs> Oh, I dream of Dyson. I do. I dream of a Dyson. It's like, so bread. sad though. Like, I, I, my birthday was. What date is it today? 21st? 21st. Yeah. So, my birthday was the 8th. And we'll say, like, at the start of May, when my sister and me being like, oh, what do you want for your birthday? Whatever. Like, obviously, we're not going to get to see you. So, we'll send stuff up, whatever. And I was like, I'd like some new pillows, like, for my bed, because my pillows are shy. And she burst down laughing and crying on the phone, being like, that is the most ridiculous birthday present ever. And I was like, no, it's not. I need to support my back. I'm getting old. I need to make sure that I keep my spine straight at night. <laughs> and she was like, fucking ridiculous. <laughs> so sad. And it is such a sad reality that I got pillows from my birthday present. Also, very, very I would have loved that. No joke would have full on been like, yeah, give me some pillows. Oh, I haven't slept this well in I don't know how long, ever since I got them. But I also am like, could I not find some cool gadget to ask my parents for or something? Do you know? Like, come on. These LED lights are the best thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Google, turn my lights green. (laughs) All I've got, I have Alexa and I have a diffuser. So she controls my diffuser, my two of my lamps, my TV, and my main light. So, like, Alexa, turn on the light. I have the Google, <laughs> I do a big Google home here and I have a mini downstairs in the kitchen nice. so like when we're cooking and shit and like you want to know like how much this is and that when you're cooking, brilliant. Amazing, amazing. Like somehow we got sidetracked to that from morning and, and night person. 
How do you, anyway, okay, next question. Rambling. Oh, we are brilliant. This is one of the more chaotic ones, but that's where I said, Kathy, <laughs> these are, there is no way any idea, like a situation would make these. They're just which way they go. Okay. Um, so the next one is your biggest addiction. Cigarettes. And have you tried during the quarantine? No, not during quarantine. However, myself and my partner decided last weekend after a few too many drinks and when I had to take my inhaler because I couldn't smoke anymore fries but needed to have another bag, I was there and he was like, this is ridiculous, we have to stop because he smoked as well. He'd smoke more than me. And uh, we were like, okay, fine, we'll get both. And he was like, we'd save so much money. Do you know, this whole conversation of like, imagine how much money we'd save because we spend this much every week. So what we did is because we both have a revolution, we created a vault that the two of us put money into every week. Now it's yet to get any money because neither of us have decided to give it up, but the intentions are good. <laughs> Definitely. No, I was the same. I was sure, I've smoked longer than you. She's like, I started smoking when I was, let's say, 12. It was awesome for years. So I started smoking again when I was 17, because I was like, on and off smoking before that. And then I smoked from 17 to two months, two months ago. Full on every day. I remember I used to smoke Mayfair, I used to smoke Benson, then I moved over to Menthol, then I was in Rowley's, back to fucking Benson. Did you smoke um, Benson? Right. Oh, yeah. All through when I get down home, I'm um, Benson and then um, me here. What are oh, we? Can I put this in, or is this going to yeah. be like some sort of advertising yeah. thing on YouTube? Yeah. Um, okay, so kids, this, this is what I guess. What's that thing that they do to block the light? <laughs> JPS. Do you like it? Do you like it? Can yeah. you see? Can you see it? Try one for yourself and tag me in the comment or tag me in your fucking I don't know, Instagram stories. Let me know if you get on. <laughs> did you cough alone? Well, because I did. Yeah, I remember smoking <laughs> GPA. Jesus. John Clare's don't last very long, but they burn too quick. That was also always what I hated with them. Yeah, fair. Okay. I just buy these because yeah. it's twenty nine in a box for sixteen quid, which is still extortionate. But well, no, that's not really because I used to pay pie still good choice, still a thick for thirteen quid. So you were getting a lot more. Yeah. You were nine nine more cigarettes for fucking three year extra. Bang so. from a book. Yeah, no. And that's why I used to miss smoking like the regular fags instead of the mint. But then when you go from the mint back to the regular, just not saying it's weird. Like you I'm sure as of yesterday. Yesterday you can't smoke menthol anymore. So you can't go back in the fag soon. No. But the funny thing is they've <laughs> already fixed a way to sell them. I know, so I saw them. Wrap it in the, I'm just like fucking love the smoking industry. Fair play. Go on tobacco. Determined tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bullshit, anyway, like. we shouldn't be promoting things like that. It's really bad. People yeah, do smoking is terrible. You I'm should never do it. If you do do it, smell good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is why uh, I can never be an influencer. Um, like I, I probably will because you're too show. bad of an influence. <laughs> yes, like, and when did you start drinking? Twelve. Don't do it. Did you ever take drugs? Do yes. Don't do it. <laughs> but if you are, like, be around friends and they should say. <laughs> yeah, do it in a good environment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're terrible influences. Right. The so next one is tea or coffee. Because clearly, we're both drinking tea and coffee. Yeah, mine's empty though. Grim. Um, I fucking horsed that in, didn't I? Uh, coffee is my answer. I think that's a more. Fiend. I drink way too much coffee. I quit that. I have had, what, you have the odd coffee, so I had a coffee last week. Two coffees, and that's when my sleep paralysis and my panic attack happened, because I hadn't had it in, like, I'm going to say, six months. Now I have, like, an iced coffee, whatever, that kind of stuff. But yeah. I think, I don't know if you remember me in school, like, I had two coffees before school started. Three during the day, the moment I went home, I was pure dish coffee and coming off coffee withdrawals. Oh, mm. worse than yeah, cigarettes. I was like, I actually that might be a bigger addiction than cigarettes to me, to be honest, because I'm not a heavy smoker, I just smoke daily, mm. like, do you know what I mean? I smoke regularly, but I'm not a heavy smoker. But like, I could, oh, like, when I'm in work, when we're in the office, obviously, we're in the office now, like, we so we drink half a tears here in the house, do you know, like, spend our coffee. Mm. <laughs> um. <laughs> But in work, we like a swanky espresso machine or whatever. And um, I would have one here at home before I leave the house if I'd gotten up early enough. And then I'd have two double shots mm. of Nespresso uh, when I go in the door in work. I'd have another one about an hour later. And then I'd have another one before lunchtime, have my lunch. Then I'd have a double, du like four shots again. And then I'd probably have one in the evening when I come home then with a cigarette. Well, like my housemates so that's yeah. like 10 shots of coffee a day which is ridiculous oh, I'd say my heart's was... health is fucking ridiculous I'm not even I... going to tell you what my resting heart rate is if I was <laughs> to get Killian to come in here because like he's mad into his fitness like he's a bodybuilder 
he usually takes the coffee. Um, I focus up your sleep. Like I, that's why I had sleep paralysis. I couldn't sleep that night because I was I had a panic attack. Then I did eventually get sleep. Yeah. I had sleep paralysis. Like that's how much it fucks with your body. The kind of thing because my body had never yeah. hadn't had it in so long. I was just like, Neh. like it was. Yeah. Uh, it was nice. It's a nice coffee. Like I bought the nice coffee because kids don't have coffee. I don't have coffee or something. So I was not down in pan, but quarantine. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have the nice stuff. But yeah, no, I used to be the same. Like, and you do you find yourself completely fatigued the whole time unless you have coffee? Yeah, I do, but I don't think it has as much of an effect on me anymore because my I, I think my system is just adjusted to it. Mm. So having coffee now is more of a taste thing than a pick me up, like do you know? Because I don't think it. But then in saying that, the reason that I don't feel the effects is because there's already so much fucking caffeine in my system at all times. Yeah, because it's constantly you know I mean? there. Yeah, it's constantly there. So I have no idea, but I haven't like I don't know when the last time was I had it, that I had a day without coffee. Like I have no idea when that was. Years ago, I think. Jesus, give yeah. me two seconds. Uh, just a brief information there for some above And <laughs> um, no, but anyway, as we were saying, um, yeah, coffee is kind of something I do love. Like we, I did buy some nice coffee there, and then I got a hazelnut syrup. Yeah, I was gonna say juice. That oh, was like no, never wrong word. And um, so that's something we're gonna have iced coffee soon. And um, that's coming actually. Six p.m. Is the rest of the alcohol here yet? <laughs> but it's between six and eight. But like I want to hear at six, you know. Um, <laughs> Definitely, we've got more beverages, but don't be worried now, people. Um, all of like five people. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. Hi, Kanina. Hi, hi, Aunt John. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello to my future self who will watch this back and be mortified. Same. <laughs> Can't watch any of my YouTube videos or try fun. Especially the ones from years ago. Oh, the ones from years ago. <laughs> like I fall oh, on like okay. burn it with fire. Who is she? Can you remember me back then? I was an <laughs> asshole. Pick his fucking weapon of a cunt ever. People are terrified right, of me at home. Game? True. You were entertaining. <laughs> That's why I kept you around. I like that. <laughs> I'm five. <laughs> Moving on to the next episode. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. I'm going to love watching this one back. Oh, okay. um, so, well, number seven <laughs> is stuck on my island. What are the three items you can bring? So, we did have a discussion oh. with Helena last week. Um, you can, if you want, to bring a human or an animal. But if you tell them it's not me, then you can't. Um, and the island does have running in amenities. So you do have clean water and the sources of food. That doesn't mean that you've eaten all but like coconut stuff and stuff. So it's an island. It's not a self for humans, but you know, what have you, you going to survive? You've three to bring. Okay, and this is about survival or entertainment? Bit of both. So like you obviously have food and water there, so you can survive. So it depends if you want to bring things that better your food or if you want to bring entertainment okay i would bring what would i bring i would bring a shotgun so i have the option there or have a wonderful utility for killing animals um because like i mean god it's going to get boring living on your own like forever like you know um and i like the controls um and then other than that i'd bring i'd probably be lousy and bring a book no idea what book I'd bring. Maybe something with survival skills in it. <laughs> I just read it to the Yeah, maybe. Or alternatively, I would bring. I bring my dog. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'd have to bring my dog. Now I'm not going to tell you which dog I choose between because I don't want either of them getting upset. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, my mom brings my, my dog, and I'm like, oh, hi, don't let it hear me, because you'd be sad. <laughs> want dog. Everyone has fucking dogs at the moment. I love you, and you're so lucky, like, but also, oh, because I have no um, pet. Killing works as Yeah, no, pet, I'm raging like, about it. I'm raging about it. Like, they're all at home. Now, at the same time, if I was at home, I'd have killed them all. If I'd have been at home for two months straight, there'd have been war, especially if I was working from home. So I'm so glad I chose to stay in Cork because it's made me like heart grow fonder. Distance, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to go home, see my dog, see my mum, but I'm also going to be very glad to come back again. Yeah, like, family are wonderful. Uh, Hello, family. I was here for a week. Don't actually watch this. I spoke about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did everything about whoopsie. Um, anyway, well, they're not stupid. Um, and number eight is actually your dream holiday. Said that I've actually oh, have a background in this TV show. Sure you know, it's lovely places. Huh? 
have a background on the TV, it's Chromecast. It's like, oh, there's another place I could go to, but you know, quarantine. Oh, mine's over in the corner going off as well. <laughs> um, what would I like? I would like a safari. I think I'd probably pick Machu Picchu. I'd love to go to South America and like do Machu Picchu and like the Inca Trails and all that kind of stuff. So I think that would be my dream holiday, definitely. With like a bit of chill there at the end, maybe. Mm. Do like a little scooch scooch down into Mexico and you know, do some nice stuff oh, down there maybe. Definitely. Or up yeah. in up into Mexico, sorry. <laughs> My geography. Is poor. I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Drop down geography in first year. I'm Mr. Doyle. <laughs> but he was the best. Hello. <laughs> um, oh no, that's that's actually because because I I'm really mad. You probably might remember this from school. I'm mad in the history and like like ancient stuff and that kind of stuff. So it's like watching. Yeah, history, yeah. Um, stuff like, like Match P2 and like the Incas and all that kind of stuff I also downloaded uh, Lara Croft on my PS oh no, nice I'm finding all that so that kind of stuff love it didn't think I wanted to go there I now do thank you very much killing some of my that yeah I'm like we're rich <laughs> <laughs> yeah Match P2 that's what I'm hoping he'll bank me for that as well I'm like that can be a treat at some stage you know mm. thank you very much <laughs> and if you were to go anywhere in Europe where would you go in Europe, well, I want to go back to London, um, but that's to live. Um, so, like, I, I spent six months in London there nearly two years ago, and um, I would love to go back. And I think I am going to go back because my company has a, an office in London, so I think I'm going to swap my job over to London. So hopefully that will happen in the next 12 months, but God only knows what's going to happen with COVID, so we'll see. Um, I was to Huh? Miss Rowan is lovely. Yeah, I know, yeah, she's killing me. Slowly, too slowly. Um, but other than that, I loved Paris. I want to do Greece or the Amalfi Coast. Where's that? Italy. I'd oh. love to do the Amalfi. I'd love to like proper, like do the whole like Instagram haunting of renting like a vintage convertible car. And like, you know, like proper, like with a headscarf that blows away in the wind. <laughs> I'm just remembering and so just eat shit, tons of pasta and loads mm. of coffee. And like, yeah, that would be, yeah, if it was in Europe, that's definitely what I do actually is the Amalfi Coast. Just like, all the ideas stole from Clashy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, definitely. The Italy one, definitely. The only thing is like the main one of Italy, because Killian's been there like, it's only worth 20 minutes when he was younger. So there. Yeah. Marion's money and all that. I joke. Um, That's how you do it. Was... Exactly. I, this bitch is broke. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's like Italy. From what I've heard, obviously, because the school used to go as well, it's very expensive in Mena, Italy, like where all like, the churches and all, and that's the side of Italy I want to see, but I don't want to see it from the tourist side of it. So if I was to go over like Rome and Italy and that kind of area, I'd love to do that, but I'd do it my own way. It wouldn't go through the tourist routes. I'd probably get my own hotel, that kind of stuff. Because I've heard it's so yeah. expensive, but then that side of Italy I'd never heard of before. So that does sound I'd love to go around the coast. Obviously, I'd look lovely yeah. in a headscarf as well. I know, yeah. Like, absolutely. Ooh. The only thing is it's it's also really expensive. It's where all the celebs like fucking yeah. go on holidays. Like Positano is on the Amalfi Coast and like all of those places, like so. But uh my fella's been there as well and he was just like, it's it was probably the best holiday he's ever been on. He was like, mm. it's just such a stunning but then I would have to get fit and healthy because all of them are at like a slope. So it's all just steps up on the side of the coast. But I mean there you have to work off peace and pasta somehow. <laughs> all of the vino. All of the vino. All of the vino. <laughs> all of the vino. <laughs> um, the next one before I, I go into a complete another depression of the whole edit and book this year that was going on <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, there, oh wait, I can't. And um, the next question is, have you ever cheated in school? Definitely. Surely I have. You were very studious though and good at your shit. Then there was me who stopped doing homework and like third year. I was all right, was. like, yeah. I was a pretty good student. I was a bit of an arsehole though as well. Like, I was just a cheeky pup, like a mouthy little bitch. Like, Bro. I'm seeing it now with my little sister, and it's so funny because it's like reliving my childhood, and I'm like, oh my god, you were such a prick. <laughs> um, I was never like that. Um, never. <laughs> No, except I'm actually looking in a mirror at her like. Um, well, I definitely did cheat 100%. I'd say I definitely cheated in college, actually. I used to look like, especially for like um, MCQs, which are like multiple choice things. I'd be looking over the shoulder of whoever's in front of me and I'd always strategically place myself behind somebody who knew what they were talking about. 
<laughs> so yeah no definitely do i have a specific incident i don't think so leave sir no leave sir no i didn't cheat on any of the state exams i'd be shitting myself I, i'm not brave enough i try i'm a little pussy really like i tried did you <laughs> no way actually i was having this conversation with friends recently and they were all being like yeah cheating leave sir cheating leave sir cheating sir i was like what how i was like that's I can't believe you did it as well, because I would have assumed that our school was like, I, I didn't think I knew anybody who cheated in the Leaving Cert. Like. So, yeah. It helped, just pointing that out. I don't, even, I don't think I got over 200 points. I may have got did 200 points. Oh, fuck it. Stephen, you're smarter than that, though. Oh, yeah, it was like, it was, that, was, that was of my own volition and my own choice. Like, I was very smart, and my teachers knew that. So when I refused to do homework and that kind of shit, my teachers didn't give up on me. I was smart enough in the class to be there and do the thing. I dropped down to most past classes about art and history in my leave cert because I was nervous. I wasn't going to college. I wasn't putting myself under stress. I just came out. I was being a massive cunt, all that kind of shit. But I was just like, I don't want to go to college, so why put myself through this pressure? I could have done honours fucking Irish and I didn't. I was fluent in Irish when I was a kid. Yeah. Well, I just, well, I didn't want to go to college. I might go back. I'm like, and I'm old enough and I can go back as a mature student, which is terrifying. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot <laughs> so for me. Yeah, like, absolutely. Because you can do it as well, isn't it? Like if you sign on to the dole, you can if you so say if you stop working for whatever amount of months and you sign on to the dole, they'll put you back through college and still give you your dole money and stuff like that mm-hmm. as well, won't they? So you can go through it that way. So definitely worth thinking about. Do you regret it in hindsight? Or are you happy with how your life has gone there? Not um, to get too deep. <laughs> no, it's a good you question. You interviewing me or me interviewing you? <laughs> it's an open conversation. <laughs> um, I think it was the best decision because I wasn't at the time. I was stuck between going to art college. I was stuck between going to fashion college. Then I wanted to become a teacher for art or something like that. Then I wanted to become a guidance counselor because I used to run the youth group and that was like fulfilling so much of my life. But back then, I didn't know who I was. First of all, you know what the fuck I wanted to do in my life, and I also didn't want to put a strain on my parents because I wasn't going to be able to pay for it, even though I was working. Person since I was 15, I always helped give money to the family. Like yourself, you worked loads as well. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't, I was like, I, William knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to be a teacher, went through, got his degree, got his master's, got his HDF, all that. I was like, look, he's done that. I've worked since, I've worked since I left school, since the day I left Saturday school, I've worked. Like the day my evenings yeah. are finished, I was in full-time employment. And everyone, like I remember yeah. coming back from college, like the first, like, I think it was the first summer, everyone was like, oh, how's your life going? I'm like, well, I'm traveling around Ireland going to a tier group the stage manager, getting bread and breakfast paid for drinks and all that kind of shit, and I have a full-time job that I've took some time off to do this. And like, yeah, well, I dropped out of college, and I'm like, well, ooh, who won? So like, <laughs> Turns out it's a win for those of us who didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, like, so that side of it, like, obviously, it's a bit cheap look back, but I do want to jump more out because I didn't have them years, but, like, moving my Killian and being my and I got to go through all that, all the partying and, yeah. like, having the crack, because he lived in, like, a really fun area in Dundalk, and all his mates are around, so really big into music because that kind of stuff did happen the learning side of it i suppose if i was to go back now i'd probably do better um, and probably, more, ever probably done more seriously because, yeah because i do like i enjoy i learn very differently like audibly i learn writing stuff down because i am dyslexic i yeah. write down a way i can understand it so like that kind of way of learning has kind of always been a reason why i've never wanted to go but then i've learned to like how when i've been on different jobs i've been in how i've surpassed that so like I definitely would go back at some point. I don't know when it's going to be. It was always a plan after 25 maybe to go back to college, but at this current moment, I don't know what I want. I, like, I want to do media and that's what I want to do, but like getting a media degree really doesn't do much for you. It teaches you a lot of things. You do the legwork that you need to do for media then. Like, and I've been on YouTube for 10 years. I've done media for 10 years. I've had social platforms for 10 years. I know how the algorithm works and how to work things and how to remote when you need to put money to get it in. Like I've spent... Got off with like over four grand maybe over the years in towards putting stuff into YouTube like and that's not even talking about how much money I've spent on ads recently like that's just like from yeah. equipment lights cameras laptops yeah that kind the of basics. stuff like yeah and um, so like I know what I'm at but also I'm like do I want do I need a media degree do I want to go work for marketing for someone because I don't want to work for the man anymore yeah. like it's that kind of end of it so like I'm happy yeah, I didn't absolutely. go but also I'm like did I miss out on something. But then I no, well, I think that's what you said about, like, especially when you met Killian and stuff. Like, I mean, look, yeah. like, everyone goes to college for an education, but also I think it's a huge, like, forming part of your life. Like, I mean, I'm a totally different person 
and this is why like the, the likes of this is so interesting because I'm a totally different person to the last time say you met we were mates or like close or whatever which would have been my leaving cert and I've changed so much because of the people that I've been submersed with since and stuff but you've done something so similar in that like you moved away and you like and that's not necessary for everybody either but like you moved away you met these people and you did do the party thing and now you're like proper like getting sorted and like all that kind of crap and still having a good time and I think there's a lot to be said for that like I think it's more about as much as you learn in college I think especially for your bachelor's degree if you're someone who wants to progress further more it's more about what you learn as a person and like social skills and things like that than what you actually learn looking at a lecture I, I firmly believe it um, and even like since I've gone into the workplace and stuff half of the stuff in my degree is irrelevant now my job also isn't necessarily entirely industry <laughs> like relevant but what I learned in college was fine but what I learned from the people I met through college brought me further in the job that I'm currently in than the basics that I learned which I think is so important for people um, and I definitely think like I mean it's mad what the leaving certs are going through at the moment but like covid and like how it's going to be graded and i know it suits some people i know in my case it would never have suited me mm. um because I was, i'm was i a crammer like that I, if i do well it's only because i cram um i'm not diligent enough to like keep it consistent i don't have that attention span um or focus um at all so it would have screwed me and i think that definitely it's worth considering taking a breather for this year especially if you're going to be doing college from home next year. Like if it's going to be where a remote learning kind of situation, I think definitely take a breather, just take a moment, learn a new skill, go on the dole if you have to like work in industry, like work in fucking waitress or something like that. I mean, I've, yeah, well, waitressing is something I promote so heavily because I did, I worked as a waitress for, eight nine years maybe i don't know whatever ever since I was 16 long. eight years i suppose yeah maybe seven years um from like when i was 16 to until i got this job which is like my first as well as like professional job and it's so important because i learned so much about people people are dicks but people are also mm -hmm. so great and you get to see both sides and it's so important to kind of learn how to deal with certain people and you know then you get to a point where you know when somebody walks through the door of the restaurant what kind of service they want whether they want you to be like yes sir no sir please sir whatever or whether they want to be like are you getting on is all all right like yeah grand whatever you know exactly what kind of like you get to mm. this stage where you understand people an awful lot better and i think that's a bigger life skill than anything else than any academic skill you can learn um because it's going to sort you out in whatever situation you're in you know, definitely, I think, because, like, obviously, me and yourself have been working since we're 15, 16, like, I started out in hairdressing, so, like, you're practically a counsellor, but then you're also learning a high-level skill. Like, I did hairdressing from the age of 15 to the age of 21. 20, 21. Yeah. I didn't go my papers because the two people I worked for were mm -hmm. lovely people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't just do a tax man or anything like that. We won't be a thing. Don't want to get sued. Um, but it taught me so much in them years. And I worked in Super Value, and then I went to work in the hotel. So I went through all of like the waitressing and the retail end of it. And then I started working for corporate companies as well. So like I've worked since I was 15. So this year is my 10 year anniversary of working, which is absolutely terrifying. So even coming to my birthday yeah, is when nice. I would have actually got one of my first proper jobs. Like, it's you learn so much more i think that's why like especially when i was working in my last job uh, before covid came and took away my job new job but look silver linings and all that happened um, yeah absolutely all for a reason blah 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 definitely seeing the kids in there that are still in college i'm like oh man pays for my car insurance man pays for my bank our uh, man pays for my phone this i'm like oh, i've been paying for that shit since i was 16 because i had money in my pocket and i worked and I know so much more about life and things and I don't like actively watch it. There's different things like you keep an eye on what's happening in the world. You're kind of keyed into things. You're, you're willing to learn where obviously I was that person at one stage as well. But just looking at them kids and somehow like I suppose it's the difference of when we were up and how they're up now. And especially with the schooling as well. It's all about repetitive learning. And I see a lot of le lower, not lower jobs, but retail jobs I think is a lot of repetitive work. You don't get anywhere you get told there's ideals of promotion that never happens and I find that's yeah. why a lot of people kind of get in that kind of rush 
yeah, easily. So easy to get trapped in it. Like you said, you were in the restaurant industry for eight years. Did you ever get offered a promotion? No, uh, the odd pay rise, um, stuff like that. Like maybe that was probably governmental pay rises as well. We yeah, uh, was few a couple of them were kind of not, but like it, that was as far as like an extra couple of euro on your um like hourly salary that was kind of it. Like you know your tips, like you made your own money in waitressing. Like I mean you lick the arse off somebody in order so that they put an extra fiver in your pocket than the one they were originally mm-hmm. going to put in. It. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that they mean you get smart about those things as well. Like, but I think things like that is learning how to cope with people, and I think they're way more important skills than anything else. And I think you need to have those or learn those before you learn anything else because there's no point in having all this intelligence in your head if you don't know how to communicate it. Yeah, like my brother is a teacher, has two degrees, three degrees, whatever. It is. When you finish college, you get that degree and then you did a master's about three degree, whatever, how many of them he has. Mm-hmm. I am way more worldly ready than he is, even though <laughs> he's been through that many years of college. Like, And he says himself, yeah. I will be a lot more world smart. Like, yes, he's money smart and book smart. But he said him to himself, I would be a lot more world smart in regards to like how to get around places, how to like find a cheap thing for that, or you can do it yeah. this way instead of doing that. That's the difference yeah, you true. learn. Yeah, you learn how to cope. And I don't, like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with parents funding their kids. And like, I mean, my mom and dad were so good, like I never wanted for anything, but yeah. I was just pushed to do it myself. Um, but mm-hmm. I always, I was never in a position where if I couldn't do it myself, I was never going to be left hungry or anything like or my mom and dad were always really good like but I think there's nothing wrong with that either but I just think that there's a certain drive that you learn from having to make your own money and the satisfaction you get when you're a kid and you spend the money that you've earned is just there's nothing like it when you can go out and you can buy something and you might be buying the same thing as your friend but when it's your money and they're paying with their parents like I mean it, it it there's just something about it that's totally different there's a gratification to be gotten from it that's amazing like no definitely, definitely. like I remember that especially like we used to have yeah. the hens when I was younger I don't know if you remember that when we had the big chicken yeah. farm my parents still together like Trish and me and we didn't know each other back then god we know each other very long Wait, you know. 25 <laughs> next month it's my I was 24 there a couple of weeks ago it's crazy I see the wrinkles there you need a bit of Botox Kai <laughs> Stop, see, fuck off. Don't do things like that. <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> no, but even that, like when I used to work, when we used to sell the fresh eggs from the house, like I was minted yeah. as a fucking 12 year old. I used to come out in the summer with 600 quid just from tips from old ladies because we will always have always asked, like, obviously, you've been in the waitress and entry, so that's like full on sales. I think people don't get that. Like, when you come from a res- restaurant job and you go into a sales industry job, and people are like, oh, you've no experience. I'm like, I sell drinks, I, food, everything. I sell myself to a customer five, six, in order to get money in my hours. pocket. Like, yeah, big time. It's all it's the difference. same. Like, I mean, it's just as in, and likewise, the only difference from going from retail to waitressing, like, I mean, people, you get people skills in any of those jobs. Hmm. Do you know, like, people skills come from all of those jobs. But the only difference between the two of those is how you carry plates. And I think work ethic stands to everybody. Um, hmm. And that's important like and that's something you learn because you're just money hungry like you get money hungry and that's that's it really um but yeah no definitely oh my god we got so sidetracked there what was that question originally oh no that was the last one so like as well like, oh, <laughs> oh good okay. Okay. i was like what was that question what was it <laughs> what was that question um i think it was oh, yeah. let me that full screen there let me go back here do i even know if they can watch all this stuff for this course of uh our sheet and skill because like, we worked after school. Yeah, fair, fair. That's where we talked about it. Yeah, that's, we'll after. say that's why it went that way. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, I think it's, like, I do love, like, the difference of, like, kids nowadays and when we were younger. We were a lot more innocent and they were a lot more awake to the world. I suppose that's the only difference I do love about it, but also the fact that they don't really have a childhood either. Do, do you notice that with your sister? Because I don't have any younger siblings. I have younger cousins and that kind of shit. Do you do you feel that with your with your siblings? Oh, I may be having some technical difficulties. Kind of crack. Wait there, we had a bit of a bit of a drop oh, there. Can you hear me? We had a bit of a glitch. I can hear you. And you got me. Now. Yeah, we're back now. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Like you, I think you were saying. Um. Do I find it with my sister and stuff? 
and I was just saying that I think it's a little bit different because I presume you're on about like whether they get to spend like we obviously were outside and all that kind of crap. Oh my god, we're so old. The fact that we're mm. talking about this, but anyway, um, like I presume it's gadgets and like the internet and all that kind of crack and how submit like how much that's in their world. But uh, like we, ha- I have it li- like a little bit different than my little sister because like I grew up in a farm, so we still have a huge amount of that. But yeah, it is totally different. But I think it's amazing for them as well. Like we live in an era where everything is so accessible and you can do whatever you want to do. We're not restricted anymore. Like, I mean, if they're so lucky in that respect, but yeah, it, it, it is a funny contrast considering there's only eight years between us and I can see a whole different like way of growing up than what I did. Um, but then there's plenty of similarities too. Um, and there's pros and cons to both. So yeah, but it's mad. It's so crazy. Like, oh, Oh, I know. Like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Life's shit, but you'll get there. Like, oh, I, I nearly tell myself, stop being such a cocky little bitch. Grow up a little bit. Cop on. You don't know everything. I should probably tell myself that now, actually. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. I think that was I'm a defense mechanism with us, too, though. That's why I think me and you yeah. became really good friends. It was it was a rather large defense mechanism, like, I like you know I hope you talk about a lot of things that's for yourself if you want it but like a lot of people like that are like oh but you were so like this and that and like you were so bubbly and like yeah so frankly I'm like no direction and like stains real fun because I'm oh I'm happy <laughs> that kind of shit like <laughs> yeah was like when we were younger that was like oh shush sure, don't tell anyone where now everyone's really open and I do think that's one of the most beautiful things that has happened yeah, in regards wonderful. to mental health, especially in schools yeah. and just on social media in general. Like, you're still going to be assholes, you're still going to be bullies. We're still so far behind in so many respects, but I think it is brilliant the way we progress. And also, I mean, look, there's plenty of, like, uh, over, over, I don't know what the word is, but, like, I mean, there's plenty of issues with that too. But I think the fact that people are getting to a point where they can freely speak is so important. Like, I think, I think it's, it's amazing that nobody tries to hide that anymore and even sorry plenty of people try to hide it mm. but that we're getting to a point where we are facilitating that conversation much more than we would have and I mean we even had it so lucky I mean like I've been blessed I'm not I I haven't struggled with my mental health too much like I mean a regular Joe you have depressive episodes and stuff but I've never mm. actually had any major issues but like, thank god I mean this is one of the only things I'll bless myself for but I'll bless myself for <laughs> But um, yeah, no, like I think it's really important that we have facilitate that for people. And like, if you think about our parents and the lack of exposure they had to it, not even knowing what it is, and people just being deemed as crazy or unwell, rather than like these are just normal things that everybody deals with. And it's like uh, you just need to have a bit of sense about it. And I think knowing the difference between having a depressive episode or feeling a little bit anxious there's a difference between emotions and an illness as well and I think that's really mm. important um and like I know when I'm having a de- like a I'm fucking sad like I don't want to get fucking sad it's or when I'm emotion. a little bit anxious about something it's an emotion but I'm lucky I don't suffer with it as an illness thank god touch wood Do you know uh, at some point I might have to but for now I don't have to but I think that's a potential negative effect of the popularizing of it is that people automatically jump the gun and assume that one feeling is an illness and it's it's like no coping mechanism is an awful lot more Mm. (laughs) like it's a standard everybody goes through these it's just an emotion but that's not the case for everybody either so it, it you just you just need to be really in tune with yourself and the more you listen to your own body i think that's the important part is that like just do what your body tells you to do if you need to be sad, be fucking sad. Stop pretending to be happy. Mm-hmm. There's no need. Everybody can fuck off. <laughs> Let yourself be sad for a while. But I think we all kind of, we didn't have anyone telling us that when we were younger. Like, obviously, mental health has become such a big thing in Ireland now because obviously there was a huge suicide rate. Even if you think of our fucking school and the amount of people that kill themselves. Like, I had four friends in the time I've been in school, like, made suicide. Yeah. Three of, two or three of them were because they were gay. And others were just yeah. because we're depressed, like, and it's it's so sad. And like, obviously, our little area has done so well. There's been families that have lost husbands and boyfriends and that kind of stuff. Our little hometown, like, as much as I like to say I hate the place, has done a lot for that kind of stuff. Like, 
Yeah. It was very yeah. stigmatized, I think, when we were growing up as well. They're like, you know me, I'm an open book. She's like, I suffer from yeah. clinical depression and anxiety. Like, Absolutely. I don't take yeah. pills anymore. But like, I am very open about that and talk. But even as you just said, people are like, oh, I'm so depressed. That does kind of work. You know, I'm not one of these people like, oh, you can't say that. But like, when you are someone that does suffer from it, it is a bit of a kick in the teeth. And someone's like, oh, I'm so depressed. I'm like, yeah. No, but like, are you like, have you not slept in four days or have you not eaten in a week or you won't shower because yeah. you don't want to leave your head and that kind of shit? Like, I had yeah. a breakdown. I'm not even last... to go on. I had, a, I had a breakdown like last year, like full on mental really? break. Like, wasn't See, well. it's mad. Like, I mean, at one point we were very close, and this is something that obviously I would have had no knowledge about until today because mm. we wouldn't have spoken in between. But like, it does, it happens to the best of us, and like. Not to, like, I suppose, belittle somebody else's feelings. Like, if you're feeling depressed, you're feeling depressed, and it is a feeling. Mm. But before you turn to medication or something, just figure out some coping mechanisms. Figure out why you feel depressed. Like, a huge amount of people don't... I, I feel like I'm talking from a really uncultured place because I've never gone through depression, but I've gone through depressive episodes. And it's like, figure out why you feel sad. Mm. There's a reason that you feel sad. It could purely be, like, I mean, for females, it could be literally the time of the month. It could be anything. It could be something so small. It could be a little bit of stress that you don't realize that something is stressing you out. But it actually is in the back of your mind. It could be something really small. And I think pinpointing those things is definitely the first marker. And then after that, like, I mean, go and find some help. Even if it's only a depressive episode, don't belittle yourself. If that's all, somebody will tell you that eventually. Mm. Somebody will let you know that this is just a small period of your life where you're going to feel a bit shit. And then you'll be fine. Like, it's about coping mechanisms and... I, oh God, we could go on about this for ages because oh, like that's one of my things that I just go, <laughs> which is awful. Well, definitely look for, I suppose, for anybody watching me, any of my followers. Um, <laughs> Same. Talk to, talk to anybody. And when I say talk to somebody, it doesn't need to be a counsellor if you don't want to. Talk to your mate, talk to your ma, talk to your granny, talk to your dad. I don't, like, it doesn't matter. Just talk to Marin's Just let them know. Be like, be like, ma, I'm not feeling great. She'd be like, why? Are you sick? Have you got a sore tummy? No, mm. my head's a bit screwed. Then she'll ask. I guarantee you your parents aren't. That's something as well. Your parents aren't as hard as they think they are. Or you mm. think they are. You find it's something you learn when you grow up, yeah. And one of the best parts about growing up and that transition between like teenage and adulthood is becoming mates with your parents. That's one of the best yeah. parts. Like nobody tells you, and my mom said it as well. And I remember a teacher that we were in school, I probably shouldn't name her just in case, but like... um she was an Irish and uh, French teacher um, and her kids would have been in school with us. Well, yeah. And brilliant. One of the mm. best women ever. And I remember meeting her in a cafe like two years ago. I was actually going to get a tattoo with my sister just afterwards and my mum. And um, she was like saying hello or whatever. And she was like, this is one, she was talking to my mum. She was like, this is one of the best parts, isn't it? And my mum was like, what? She was like, nobody tells you about this when you're raising kids. Nobody tells you about the part when they become adults and they become your mates and they're like having, it's like having girlfriends all over again. It, mm-hmm. She's like, nobody tells you about that part where you get to gossip with your kids and you get to have a bit of fun and stuff. And I think that's like, I mean, that's so important. It's like the relationship you build afterwards. Um, and you get all over all of the fights and squabbles you have when you're a teenager. They all just, they fall into the background. They're not there forever. We both had fucking mad squabbles with parents and Oh, definitely. You get over and you, you stop being a little bitch and they get a little bit more understanding and everybody just adjusts to life. Um, and then move on. So true. Like, like cause I've, obviously, you know my bloody family history. Even before this, I, like, was, like, trying to fix stuff in my own head as a person. Like, you need to also think, obviously, you've mentioned this quite a lot, what's going on in here isn't actually what yeah. other people are thinking and yeah. how other people go about. And I think that's what yeah. like quarantine has given me to time to think and fix a lot of things. Like, look, I swear I'd shoot my parents a long time ago, that kind of stuff. But I actively ring my dad or my mom and be like, well, bitch. And like, I What's totally <laughs> like rad mom out to my, her ex-husband and my brother today and then rang William and me rang mom. And then William was like, oh, are you a bitch? And mom, he's like, you fucking cunt. Did you just, did you tell your mom like, no idea hiding under a pillow on the WhatsApp. I'm like, I have no idea what friend about. But that is like, you've become a best friend again. Because, I know I was when I was a teenager with my mom when we fell out and I were back best yeah. friends. But as you become... You, you develop an crack. adult relationship. 
Mm-hmm. You develop an adult relationship with these people. Um, and they're still your parents very much so. Like, I still mm. pray to my mom. I still ring my mom for like, oh, I'm about time. But at the same time, I also ring and I'm like, oh my God, what's your one say the other day? <laughs> I heard yeah. you happened at home, tell me. <laughs> yeah, go on, give me a gossip. <laughs> oh, I love them phone calls. But it is, it's, it's great. But it is, no, like, I mean, God, yeah, our younger selves. Jesus, we've gone on a tangent. <laughs> this is what these are about, Kai. This is what these are about. Anyway, um, no, yeah, we have a very important topic to discuss. We do. And that, my friend, is... Drag Race. RuPaul. Yes. So obviously, if you do follow me and I have my socials or even YouTube, you can see that I've bought a lot of makeup stuff. I actually uh, have a James Starr. Stunning. I do love Abba. Um, so you know yourself that I've loved RuPaul's Drag Race for years, so I'm actually getting to drag myself. So obviously, this is something we both love. You've watched everything, haven't you? So you're up to date on twelve, season twelve. <laughs> Are we going to spoil this? For, okay, we need to like put in like a little window thing that disclaimer is mm, oh. here being like no spoilers. Spoiler like, alert. Not talk spoiler about the spoilers. Alert. So if you are waiting to watch RuPaul's Drag Race season 12, you need to skip for the next two hours. Yeah. Full on. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, hmm, I can edit in a spoiler. I'm like, it's all in. going to spoil it. It's just effort. Like, if you watch, it's your own <laughs> Yeah. No. Oh my God. Um, what was your biggest shocker? We'll talk about this season, will we? Um, yeah, well, first, I suppose we could ask, like, well, who's your favourite out of, like, all the seasons? Because like, I have, like, three queens that I, Ooh. like, love. And it's UK and the US. Okay, UK barely counts because it's, like, a separate entity and it needs to be discussed in its own right because it's a very, very True. different form of drag race. True. However, let's go US. Shangela. Hmm. Queen. Love her. Oh, she's great. She's also a cunt, but she's the right kind of cunt. Um, I'm going to Obviously, Alyssa. You have to love Alyssa. You can't not love Alyssa. Brooklyn Heights. Vanjie. Obviously. I'm so excited for the new All-Stars in here. Um, I know, I just love Killian that. I'm just like, it's not her five. Look at the <laughs> have you seen? Have you seen the trailer? No, because he's in a bloody work and then we were watching Modern Family and then we were watching something else last night. So I love Jonathan. Watch the trailer. It's so, oh my God, the character's on it. It's going to be so good. And I need it because we're not getting the fucking season finale for season 12 for ages. Also, the season finale for season 12 is going to be a virtual lip sync. Mm-hmm. I think I know how to do it. I'm not it. happy about it. It's not going to be done over Zoom. I think... There's a lot of like commercial level, you obviously know from working in it as a PA um, for a company, there is a lot of different commercial and video yeah. conference things. So I think it will be done in a very professional and even in the kind of TV industry, there is a thing where you can do that. And a lot of shows actually do have it on Netflix, you just don't notice where actual shows are filmed, where they'll send them like cameras, shifting cameras and that kind of shit. So I think it's yeah. going to be done that way. I do think it is going I to be think- like, I don't doubt but it'll be done really professionally but I would happily wait for almost now would I I don't know I really want to know who wins but I think I would happily wait for 12 months nearly just to see the final I'd hate that for the queens though but anyway I because they can't book yeah. anything but you suppose they can't do anything either because quarantine oh, I'm like I need I need another final like when Asia O'Hara let a whole load of fucking dead butterflies out of her wrist I need that again. That's not going to happen on virtual. Like that's not going to happen on a virtual lip sync. I need. I need Asia O'Hara. She shit on a dead butterfly. Oh, the best thing ever! It's like it's so. Oh no, they're dead. Oh, two are alive. No, no, they're dead. Oh, are you you a fan? The hard one, you see, because my favourites are like a Eureka. <laughs> like I do love her and I hate her. She's very a lot, and she's been through a lot in her life. She was trans, and she did transition. She didn't know there's a lot of things that goes on her life, like especially. But I'm going through at the moment, like getting into drag and makeup. You know, I've done stage makeup for years and stage managed. So like makeup is something I've always done. I've done all the people. Yeah. I didn't do it on myself a lot. I used to do man's makeup, my friends' makeup, my girlfriends. You know, Roisin used to. Yeah. Take out her makeup once and she never let me do it again. Uh, but you see my mom and Lena, it's like, probably she's really good at makeup. You've seen it for just fucking Alex yeah. looking. So are you. Like, you, you do your own makeup as well. You're proud of this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I'm fucking good looking bitch. Give me. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, go on. 
like doing that like even I'm like do I want to be a woman but then I also I've had a lot of time to sit and think with that obviously me and Keelan have a very open mission we talk about a lot of things especially because mm-hmm. when I first met him he was not into drag race and now he's a bigger fan of drag race than I am and like he's a bigger fan of some of the queens when like, I remember we first met and he was like oh the fuck on a gay shit you watch and if I go like you're my boyfriend you know we're kind of both like it's you know yeah but he didn't know he didn't grow up and didn't have an open world to unfortunately John Dock doesn't have a very large scene but it was a lot, I, I just learned a lot from the youth group and that kind of shit and yeah. he's very into that and I, I may, may have said of course he's dressed and all his dresses brass and necklace and so like who was shocked I was gay or wanted to be a drag queen but even doing the makeup over the last two or three weeks I'm just like introspectively looking at myself then and understand what some of the queens say you know and especially Ulrika Hara when she did transition for a while because she did believe she was a woman. I didn't. I was just going to say I didn't realize that Eureka transitioned. Hmm. Years and she she never got any surgeries and she was on hormones and was going to go down the route. And um, there is a big thing where you kind of lose your identity and that's why everyone's like, "Oh, what's your name? And what are you going to do?" I'm like, I'm trying to find who that person is first. There's always been a character. I think there don't that force it though, Stephen. I don't no, think not at all. force it. Yeah. It's something that needs to grow organically and everyone's like, oh, what can I make me kind of do? It's like, that's the whole point of me doing, like, buying the palette and doing stuff. It's like, this is learning every day. I'm not going to look like every other queen. I'm not going to be that kind of thing. Like, Willem is, like, my idol. Um, and I kind of f- think, think, I've spent too much time in Dublin, think, um, that kind of drag where it's, like, it's, don't give a fuck. This is me. This is who yeah. I am. I've always been like that. I probably was a bit too much like that when I was younger. And kind of put mm-hmm. people off with my friend, but also remember my twenty first how many people were there just down the whole gory. I still go on about that just to this day to kill any fact you really see my <laughs> bar- barrier. I had three floors that full just saying bar- <laughs> okay. I still don't know how the fuck that happened or why people can, but still. Um <laughs> but like that kind of person, like Willem is very very what I kind of envision what I would do. Obviously, I'm not that skinny, and I'm probably not going to shave my body parts because the awfully fucking effort that like shaving this recently, <laughs> like see that gash. Yeah, that's from, from shaving, is it? That's from a cheap razor. Oh, I need to buy a new one, but like yeah. Willem adore because she sings live, and I love actual drag. So like the Americanized yeah. drag is very fishy passion girl. I yeah. kind of like the old school Irish English drag because it's what I've seen. And it's what yeah, I've that seen was something me. about um. Root UK Drag Race. When it when I first watched, I only watched it really recently. I didn't really like. I mean, it's not out that long, but like, I watched it very recently, and I didn't realize it even existed. First of all, but anyway, um, and then I watched it, and for a couple of episodes, I was like, oh, oh. I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this at all, at all, at all, at all. But then I got into it, and I was like, oh my god, bag of chips is great. And then I was like, oh my god, bag of chips is a cunt. And then I was like, oh my god. The Vivian's impression of Donald Trump is the best impression of Donald Trump I have ever seen. Ever seen. And I've watched several. Oh my God. Davino DeCampo wasn't a huge fan until the end. Again, spoilers. You need to leave if you're not. If you don't mm-hmm. know and you're going to watch, leave. Leave the video. But don't still like and share and subscribe to Stephen's yeah. page. Um, <laughs> But yeah, um, everyone's like, I'm, yeah. I'm going to share it for you. I'm like, thanks, be my YouTube fan. <laughs> but there's something about the groundedness. And I think they talk about it a lot in the show. Is And it's about um, American queens. They don't do the whole modesty thing. Like, I mean, that's that's something that's inbuilt into us in Ireland and the UK. Like, um, And they don't have it as much. They're very confident and they're quite happy. Whereas we're kind of like, yeah, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. But like, I mean, you know, I could do this. I could do that. Um, and it was actually something I found hard to watch in the beginning because I was like you're a fucking drag queen you should have your fucking confidence like you should know who you are and you are fucking boss ass bitch so I found that hard first but it was really humbling as the season went on it was it was like nice to watch people who I could see myself as being friends with or see my friends in mm. doing drag race as opposed to these idols that I was like do you know it was it had to be more like regular Joe woman but who are your top three? So I listed seven. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably listed. Well, Willem definitely number one. Adore because of her life singing voice and just the kind of really? grungy drag. Adore, adore yeah. Delano. Yeah, have you heard her sing? I'm gonna link you. I've heard. Oh no, I've heard her sing. Yeah. 
Stay by Rihanna. Do you remember? Have you heard her sing that? Who? Stay by Rihanna. She sang that. Have you heard her sing that? She's like albums out as well. well. Oh, she is. She yeah, I know she's released a load of music. Yeah, I know she's released a load of music. She left All Stars uh, three. Three, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, last week. Yeah. And I lost all respect for her then because I was like, no. Oh, I was like, uh, yeah. I was like at that point because I liked her in her own season, and then she came back, and I like I still liked her. Um, and then I didn't actually like what she did for her talent show in the opening episode of that season. Mm-hmm. She sang, but I thought I was like, because I'd heard her sing obviously before. Mm. And when she sang in that, I was like, this sounds very fake. I was like, I know you can sing. Yeah. This isn't you. Um, and then when she left, I was like, fuck you, bitch. I was like, people work really fucking hard to get into that. Like, and you're not even fucking making an effort. I was like, no, that's a fucking hard thing to get into. And you're after throwing it away. I was like, bye. I get I what you're saying. And I, really, I understand. And I do agree with some of it, but I don't agree wholeheartedly. The difference, I think, with her to other queens is she's also an artist as well yeah. as a drag queen. I think that's where she was coming more from her artistic integrity and the fact that her and Michelle worked and she couldn't deal with Rue again. And the people don't understand, like, you're working 17, 18 hour days. They're not allowed alcohol, drug, and that kind of shit. I know, yeah. Like, it's very different coming from, like, a tour to that. And I get where she was coming from. Yes, but does she think someone else could have done it? But it was also probably a storyline. But there yeah. is that end of it as awesome. well, just from... But like, I, the only thing is, how the fuck would they get her to do a storyline? Mu- it must have been money. Hmm. Like, because I, I thought that at the time, I was like, this is a storyline. But then, I was kind of like, nobody gives up that crown too easy. Hmm. And then I thought, I was like, if she did, then she doesn't want it that badly in the first place. But then look at Belle, like, the crown. Yeah, that what fucking off pissed me off. Oh, she would have been up there... She would have been up there with my tops if she hadn't done that. That was fucking cop out. That was retarded. Oh, this hilarious. is fucking dog eat dog world. And you just fucked it up. However, great content. Oh, definitely. <laughs> great TV. Like that and got the view in. Um, what do you think of, obviously, the whole drag race, the girls themselves have a con, uh, con. That's the word I'm looking for. Games of con. Controversies, that's the word. This is how a dyslexic brain works. It's like conversation. No, not that word, the other word. No, not that word. Real fun. <laughs> You're just seeing me have a brain fart on camera. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about, like, have you heard about any of the controversies with actual room? Like fracking the age? Like or... the fracking. Oh, I only heard it during the week. Disgraceful. Last week, I heard it's been gone for ages. Oh, no. Last week, my roommate told me he was like, Did you hear about it? And I was like, No. Um, I cannot believe it. He has something like, what is it? Is it 660 acres? And on 30 of them, he has given people mineral and water rights to frack mm-hmm. in fucking, what, what's the state? Texas, Wyoming, I think. No. Well, yeah, no, Wyoming or Texas. no, 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 no. Is it Some Wyoming? badass country part of America. Like, I'm going to go Texas, Austin, yeah. Wyoming, Austin Montana. is in Texas. Not from America. <laughs> Kanye, Kanye, Kanye has a ranch there as well. Wyoming. Is it Wyoming? Yeah, where, yeah. Yeah. Just, I would yeah. for watching Kardashians. Um, <laughs> Kardashians actually, and also loads, loads of celebs are after going and buying land in Wyoming because it's like real sparse land. And apparently, and I was like, I was talking to my roommate the other day and we were like, did somebody just walk into a Met Gala ball and be like, here, I'm going to sell you land in Wyoming? Because... Apparently, a load of celebs are after buying huge vats of land in Wyoming, so something's going to happen there. It's I think it's happen. probably going to be in LA, in the California hills, where they all live, in like where Chris and Kim and Jeffrey Star and all them live. Mm-hmm. I think that's where Wyoming's going to become. Kanye wanted to move out there, and I'm just out of myself. I do watch Kardashians, it's kind of fabulous. It's yeah. hilarious. Killing me even watches me. He's like, this is stupid, but I'm glued to it. I I'm, like, I'm up for it, yeah. They're on a six month fucking high is COVID and I'm not here for it. I was like, I have to and I was like, ah. And then one into the next week, I was like, Excuse me? Ah, um, <laughs> and then I have to Google it and I was like, oh, you bitch. I get it. Yeah. But the fuck I mean, yes. look, global p- pandemic, but I need some entertainment in the midst of it. But that's mm. what I'm so angry about, fucking RuPaul for as well. I'm like, <gasps> and they had to stop filming the second season of the UK Drag Race in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, like, and how do you go back to that? Because then is it like, 
obviously when you're filming the whole true thing true, it's like it's cohesive and like it's real emotions, but they've had time to leave this set and come back and I know things could have happened that we don't know about and like how does that work now because they'll have time to talk off of it like obviously you can send NDAs and all that kind of shit that's like that's a weird thing I get really into like obviously because I've done this for so long like, yeah. I understand NDAs and that kind of shit like when you can sign shit and when, uh, when you can speak and that kind of crap like when you're working for like a large company like that and the fact that they have you under lock and key and you can't like they can't do events can't speak about it until it's yeah. released and until the finale goes through and then six months after that they have to do all the press first and then they can take stuff. So, like, the girls yeah. are getting fucked over season 12 and the second season of... Uh, yeah, UK, no, it's so like, tough. Like, so TV so is a different tough. game. Oh, totally different game. But it's mad. Like, I find it so insane that, like, they're, we're not going to get a final and it's, like, the finalists... Like, they've been waiting so long now. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that was filmed in, what, like, October? September, October last year. Yeah. So, like, they've been waiting for then with the assumption that they'll be able to film it now, so, like, in the next two weeks. And now they're not going to get to film it. Well, I suppose they are. They're going to do the virtual thing. But they're still not going to get the final that they deserve because this, mm. oh, season 12 has been one of the best seasons. The talent on season 12 has That's been amazing. Thing. And these queens so deserve it and they're not going to get the final that they deserve, like, the, like, Evie Oddly final, like, the fucking proper job. They're not gonna but, get it, which is sad. Like, like they'll definitely be able to get like their gowns and their clothes and their wigs and their props and everything. I'm saying, I think it is gonna stand them though, because they've won within this pandemic. They didn't have to change how they make their money, so there'll be more. Obviously, because they are a younger queen and they are more people who are kind of tech savvy. Like, if you go back to like say Willem and Adora's seasons, they weren't really tech savvy. They didn't have pages that thing. Obviously, Willem that he's been in the industry for years and been on TV. If you have watched it, you will know because he drops his fucking name every five minutes. And that's why I love him. Um, but they, it gives them an opportunity. They can build a larger online persona and do, like, say, Cameo, YouTube, build up that social media so they can still get yeah. that money in. But then when yeah. it does come to the point where they can perform again, they do have an online persona and obviously an in-person persona. Where Queens before had to learn the hard way how to do that, where now they're kind of forced into having to do it. But a lot more queens, I think, nowadays have social media before they actually perform. Like, I know yeah. I've done. Oh, sure, loads of them me. come on being social media mm. queens. Like, yeah. Like, I've done some performed as me. So have you, and you've done shows in school. Like, yeah. But then me thinking about if I was to perform as a queen, I was like, what would I do? I'm like, because I can dance, I can kind of sing. Well, I used to be able to sing really well before my voice broke. YouTube soprano <laughs> and now I'm definitely a tenor bass but like I haven't sang in years that's something I want to get uh, back into as well in this hitch but like queens kind of have this kind of ability to like they've, uh, they can learn I think a lot they need to like be careful what they tweet be careful about what yeah. they post yeah because you that's aren't great. a gig you can't be like oh I said that drunk you saws you, you're like you're, <laughs> you're doing the live show one and you've done it that kind of thing like, who's your pick? Who's your pick? Also, actually, sorry, we need to talk about Sherry Pie. What a cunt. Mm-hmm. How do you um, feel about the fact that the editor are out of all of the episodes? Um, at the start, I said, yeah, it was a good idea. It did make some of the episodes feel very weird. Killian did mention in the last one. He's like, I get that why the editor are out, but like, it's a bit shit because it makes it feel disjointed. I was like, well, they hadn't and the plan wasn't to edit her out at, at all. Um, oh, really? They going, yeah, they were going to leave her in till there was such backlash after the first episode. Yeah, okay. No, because like I, I was actually something similar at the beginning. I was like, yeah, no, fuck this cunt. But as I progressed, I was like, no, because I'm going to hate her anyway. So let me mm. hate her and still acknowledge her talent. Like, let oh, me she... hate her and still compare her and be like, you could have won this if you weren't a dickhead. Let me do that thing where I'm like, you're so talented and now you've thrown it down the fucking funny like, do you know? Allegedly. Um. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Let's not have people come for us. Gosh, tell yeah. me you are team Sherry Pie. Oh no, I'm saying so I don't get in trouble by anyone because people will comment on this. Oh my like, gosh. I was Oh no, fuck. No, it, we know I all that. You meant, like... Oh no. Allegedly it's just a thing you yeah. might use on the internet just in case I mention things. No, was even I get whole... you. Sorry, I thought. Oh no, fuck no. I think she's an absolute disgusting. And like I get that she's very good, but each character is the exact same. It's an yeah. old woman. Big like, yeah, time. she was doing real good, but like, you're doing like, it's very British drag what she's doing, first of all. 
Um, but she's doing the same thing. It's just a different face and a different hair, but the same voice and the same characters as, and the yeah. characteristics of the character. Like it's all one. Like it kind of starts yeah. out with something different, but like then it's like, well, it's all this old, like, mm, like snatch him, brilliant. Yeah. But like that's everything you've done in every character. Yeah, she continued doing it in like Gaze Anatomy and all those as well. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, okay, who's your pick out of the finals? Who was left again? Gigi, Crystal, mm-hmm. Sherry Pie, and Heidi went home. Who's the other one? J- no, Jada oh, went home. fuck, Jack. Jada. Um, Jada. Jada. Oh, Jada, Paul. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, I'm like, my heart is with Gigi. Yeah. Love her to bits. But also, like, I was full on on Heidi in Plaza. Like, I want her. Like, she should have won. Yeah. And the whole fact that Sherry Pye can't be in it, like, she should have been brought back as a wild card. Maybe that might happen. I, I think, I think so Jackie Cox happen, is going to be brought gonna back. She's not going to be there. She's not going to be there. Yeah, I think Jackie Cox is going to get to do it because she went home in the semi finals. Again, mm. you shouldn't have watched this. If I just spoil the most recent episode for you, you shouldn't Oof. have watched it. All right, I told it. <laughs> but no, um, Jackie Cox will come back. Jackie Cox still won't win it, though. I love mm. Jackie Cox, but she won't win it. And she got kind of annoying near the end, which was still very good. And she put a lot of work in. Yeah, Crystal Methods. So. Oh, love her. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hated her at the start. Had no time for her. Oh, same. But yep. that's the kind of drag I love. And she's defo. The reason why she's so weird and think out of it it's because she's defo, like, cleansing, if you get me, because she's filming. Kind of person, a defo, like, comes across, like, like you are a big fitter head most She's a microdoser, kind of, like. Oh, full on, like. She microdoses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I yeah. love all her conceptual Oh, she's ideas. gas, so. She's so Lower. cool, like. Oh, she's great. I reckon she has ADHD or something, maybe. She just is so bubbly, like. Um, um, are you a Trixie Mattel well. fan, though? Huh? Are you a Trixie Mattel fan, though? Oh, I love her so much. Oh, hate her. Why? Hate her. First of all, she stole the final from Shatangela. Second of all, um, she just doesn't deserve... I don't actually enjoy her makeup. And I get the concept. And I like I like the whole, like, can't be clowny makeup. Like, I mean, I love Crystal. Mm. Don't enjoy Trixie Mattel's makeup at all. her makeup, though. A lot. From the show. Her Has face she? isn't... Her face isn't Even that clown face. Yeah, her face isn't that kind of face anymore. It's a lot more demure. Um, the kind okay, of contour well, is a lot more, um, I wouldn't say contour, lightened or shaved down. The contour was just like a fucking, it was like putting but a face on. That's right, makeup though. That's like when I sent a picture up to my cousin Lena, like, I'm not sure how for being a little bit of a, a joke. Um, she was like, yeah, no, love it. it's a bit big. I'm like, but that's what drag makeup is. And she's like, no, but it's no, a but it wasn't, your face. I don't think it was just the way it was cut. Like, you know, like it wasn't just sculpted. Mm. It was never at the right angle. Like, you could see how it was always at a different angle to the way her cheek actually looked. So you could see her cheekbone popping out at a different angle. So it never made her face... Well, in my opinion, it never made her face a correct shape. I think her face always looked like a fucking pentagon or something because she had just the wrong shading. And, like, her shading... Like, I'm definitely going to have the same thing now when I go on, when I see this back. But, like, when she contoured her forehead, she was often left with this, like, peak like mm. a triangle because she just did and then like forgot to do her hair that's um, the thing She's so, yeah. she was a mock. I didn't like her personality didn't like well I did at the beginning yeah I just I because she stole it from Shangela it just ruined it for me and I was like what the fuck is this shit you see I, she got a lot of hate for that as well and I think None of that was down to Trixie or Shangela. That was pure down to, that was done on purpose by the producers. Like They knew they put Shangela at the forefront that she was going to win. Everyone loved her. She's people's person. That's TV. That's the whole point. Oh, but no, I she totally said, understand. She said the amount of hate that she's got for that. And it's not because I'm a like, defender or anything, but I'm just like, I look at it from introspectively, like that kind of thing, because I'm so because I've done media for so long and YouTube and that kind of stuff and like I know friends that could be big enough and famous stuff that kind of shit but even as how I look at a film like Killian hates the same aside me watching a film I'm like that's wrong because this doesn't happen because I'm that kind of person who looks at a show or a film like that was yeah. filmed this way that was filmed that because I'm really interested in it so like the way that final like played out with Shangela and Trixie like I knew by how it was edited it was like she didn't win she should have but she didn't 
Yeah. And like there was a reason why they like everyone's like, oh, they zoomed over it, like to she Shangela. Like, like that was done on purpose, so you feel sad for her. And then you get annoyed at her. So that means that Trixie's yeah. then gonna get all of that publicity, whether it's good or bad, she's still gonna get it. Well, so is Shangela because yeah. her name isn't mentioned in the same thing. So yes, Trixie won, but Shangela still got the fame from it as well. So it did both girls yeah. at once, if you look at that in. She didn't because... get the prize. No. But the prize money as well is different. Money though. They don't okay. get all that money. They get a hundred thousand dollars. They get about, I think, after tax, about sixty grand. Sixty oh, that's just grand. because of taxes, though. Yeah. But it has to be taxed. Like, I mean, yeah. you like, yeah. I still understand why they do that, though. Like, I still understand why they say like you get a hundred thousand dollars. That's just tax. Like, yeah. yeah I think so. Oh, I don't know. So, right, pick your winner for season twelve. Season twelve. <laughs> If Heidi was still there, I would say Heidi because I think she's hilarious. I hated her day one. I mean, who's this annoying yeah. bitch? And then I was like, oh, fuck, I hate, I, lo- I hate love you now. And I love you. I'm going to say Gigi because I think she needs it. I don't think she, she has, she's always had a following, I think. she. That's why she got on the show and her, her talent. I think if she was to get the crown, it would allow her to then understand like her talent and what she actually can do and that she should believe in herself but it also could fuck her over because i've been there right oh my gosh, yeah. to, there's a reason why i quit youtube years ago it's because uh, my head wasn't able to deal with it but it is the fact of i'd love her to win but like, can she deal with it yeah so i do want her to be the person that wins but i'm also like hmm I do want you? Gigi to win, but I think that Jada will. Yeah. Because it's a lip sync battle and Jada's a better dancer. Gigi's that like rigid, like, I mean, she can dance, like, and we saw that, like, I mean, her last mm. episode was very good. She's a cartwheel. But isn't I think she? when it comes, huh? She's a cartwheel, isn't she? Or, no. She's a cartwheel. I don't she's know. She was mad, one though, one. With, the big, with the big red chaps, anyway. Yeah. She was great. But, oh, um, she stood across the stage. No, sorry, she previously, yeah. um, what you call it, did. I think for that we should defo oh I still have an idea we're in the middle of a podcast slash tv show we should do a catch up every week for a drag race definitely we do a fucking one of the okay. absolutely mm-hmm. yeah we can after do you watch it on Saturday when it comes out yeah oh sure what am I on about we're finished watching it all we're going to get to watch is the reunion now no but like there's obviously a new show coming out in June yeah absolutely so for all stars we can do that definitely we'll do that yeah, yeah sure. um Sorry, but yeah no no, yeah, that's it. Like, I'd like Gigi to win, even though I kind of fell out of love with her as much, but I still think she's really talented. Jada probably needs the win more, in my opinion, um, mm. because she kind of... I, well, I don't know. I actually don't know much about Jada's social following, but Jada, I think, needs the win for the gratification because she's that little bit older. She needs it to solidify her career. Um, and I think she probably will win, even though she's not my favourite. I don't particularly like her as a person. I think she I think will that as well she's so fishy. Yeah, I think she's so fishy in drag. My roommate thinks she's so hot outside of drag. I don't. Don't find her hot at all as a man. Uh, Gigi, stunning mm. all around. So fucking hot. Crystal Method would be the best winner in the whole entire world. Would love to see her win, but I don't think she will. <sighs> also, I kind of don't think she deserves it against the others. Even though I'd love to see her win. <laughs> yeah, but then Jinx won. Remember when Jinx... Yeah, see, see, that's the thing. It's all done because like, yeah. they, this is all... Like, there's, we're only seeing a I think Jinx deserved her win, though. Of, she did. I do think Jinx deserved her win. And it was a story yeah. after they made out that she couldn't do anything and then we all saw how fabulous she was. But the other thing with Gigi and like, Crystal and Jada, like, there's a lot of backlash at the moment with the community and how it's been whitewashed and like no one's following the black queens, the white queens get more famous and have a million of followers and the black queens don't. There's a lot of that going on in the community. So I don't know if the producers are going to, um, I said Jada doesn't deserve to win, but if Jada won, is that just because they're trying to tease the people that are watching the TV? And then it was like the episode on the all-star or the celebrity one where, I know it was, was it the celebrity one? Because they say I'm watching so many of them this moment. Because the celebrity one's happening, and then there's yeah, the, I've only seen one of them yet. It's no, no, no. yeah, that's in, why I haven't watched anyone. Yeah, um, season twelve. Yeah, remember when they had the the queens are the super fans, and they're all white girls. Yeah, people are giving it about that, but it's not the producers. The show's fault that they're the people who are signing up for it. 
but it's also not the fault of the queen either if they don't get famous even though they win on their black there's such a, like and obviously it's an, a very intriguing but then, like, conversation like bob the drag queen yeah like bob the drag is. queen or like there's plenty like i mean yeah but I mean, Mark look. does talk about it on his, like he did on his recent podcast with um, uh, Money Exchange. It is something that happens unless they win. Oh, there's the oh, Queen deserved it. Shouldn't have not been, not have been a tie. Just saying. I don't remember that happening because I was drunk and I watched it and I haven't rewatched really it. So, like, anytime I watch one of the drag I'm like, did I watch that episode or was I pissed? Because I read the gig tonight and I thought, because <laughs> the drag queen's in Dublin, actually. Oh, can I give you the link? I don't know, can I? The Queen's in Dublin, but anyway. Um, okay. But it's just like, uh, uh, Jay, like, Monet, like, is fabulous. She went on Bill series, which is a YouTube channel, but also is a TV show. And we use, I think it used to be a TV show or just an online show, but she hosts that okay. and has had her own section in it for, like, nearly two years. Fabulous. But the fact her and Bob then had a conversation recently about how black queens don't get the following uh i haven't watched it yet but i've seen articles about it and there's a lot of talk about it in the community obviously because then the episode with all the super fans and they were all white girls but like then is it the fact that producers only pick the white girls because they're crazy fans or is it the fact that producers just pick white girls because it's easy and they didn't pick any black girls you see that's the difference because there is yeah. everyone loves drag race gay guys straight girls and the gay community got open hands out as well that like oh why is yeah. there no gay men like it's not just white fucking cis girls that are our fans like like it's different yeah. i'm a gay man i watch it you're a cis white girl you watch it yeah yeah absolutely i don't know like i mean when i think about it i think a lot of my faves are black mm. drag queens if we if we want to get into it like i mean my personal i think a lot of them like me and Chandra. Money Exchange, Bob the Drag Queen. I agree. I really like Peppermint. Which is oh, Peppermint's brilliant. Oh, and she's just so much for the trans, trans community. Oh, I fall on love how much trouble we were gotten for that because she was told she couldn't get her to ties before the show. What about you? I was told, no, you come with tits, you get kicked off. Well, a lot of that show was cut out about her talking about her transition and how she was a woman. And she was afraid to talk about it on the show in case she got kicked. Wow. Mm-hmm. And she had been on an All-Stars too. Oh, there's a reason why she left, because Rue and her had a big fight. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love up so much shit, sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I anyway, like, I don't know. Mad. Oh, my like, God. Oh, Stephen, we could talk about this for hours. Oh, definitely. Maybe we should. Let's end the video and continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Yeah, you know, like drag race. This has been really fun. Under... Oh, definitely. Like this is why I do. It's a bit of a chat. It's a bit of a catch up with someone, but it's also it's how how much long under. Um, an, hour and half. an hour and a half, definitely. Wow. So, like, we definitely look. We should continue this chat offline. I hope you have enjoyed. Um, I, as me and Kat did mention this, we might do something for drag queen because uh, we do have such ideas about it obviously can't even just go to your shop and I need to collect my shopping downstairs and I'll pee um, but like, it's been really enjoyable I can enjoy catching up with you Kat. we've openly talked about life it's been really nice yeah, family nice. drag race um, so if you look if you enjoy this um, work away if you'd like to know more about Kat you will put her links in the description if she's okay with that. her Instagram more <laughs> not better follow me, her. Get follow me. <laughs> same um, but yeah I, hope you've I don't do this. fuck all on social media but you can follow me <laughs> same people are like are you still with Killian I'm like yeah why I'm like I haven't posted them on, on Instagram and forever I'm like my last post is with Killian there's some post on Instagram anymore I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like oh you're a social media person I'm like why don't you I'm like because I don't leave my house. Hi, I'm still in my bed. <laughs> Nothing to post. Got a beard. Got a fire. Sorry, I didn't buy any decent loungewear this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm fine. Look at my bra. Oh, I can do this yeah. now. Watch. Gorge. Wait, wait, I'll show you. She has boobs now. <laughs> and there are my mom's like, I'm sending you a bra on the post. Oh, God. Love my parents Mad. so much. Right, it's a great so- present. A solid be. adult present too. Thanks, <laughs> mom. Well, look, I've really enjoyed this. Hope you guys have as well. Obviously, I'll put Katty's social media down as well below in the description if you like it. And um, if you want to come along on this journey, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll get a notification if YouTube decides to fucking work, which it never does. Um, and yeah, enjoy. I should have a video up on Friday. I think it's going to be about makeup. Having a notion. 
I'm recording this before that, so like there'll be a Friday video if I'm a good person. But yeah, um, enjoy, comment, like, subscribe. I'm gonna go watch a, a drag show and get drunk. Um, but yeah, thank you, Katty, for being on the show this evening. I hope you no enjoyed problem. it. No problem. I did. Well. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.